Hey folks, thanks for checking out Reigniting Liberty. I'm Deneen Borelli and Dr. Tom Borelli is in the house bringing you the truth in black and white. So up for this week, folks, Democrat mayors are suddenly complaining about the number of illegal migrants that are overwhelming their cities and their homeless shelters. Gee, imagine that. <laughs> hmm. Well, the Democrat hypocrisy is on full display, folks. You can't miss it. And this is over the crisis at the southern border, which is not just a border crisis. It is an America crisis. And thanks to the federal government, illegal migrants are being transported throughout the country on flights, on buses. And this is not new. This has been going on under this current administration. And it's been happening in the dark of night in a lot of cases. And we will get into that at some point, won't we, Dr. Tom? But uh, hold up. For one second, what, what, what is that I hear? I'm hearing Democrat mayors complaining. They are complaining about the influx of illegal migrants in their cities, Dr. Tom. Yes, Deneen, isn't it interesting? Now we have the Democrat mayors whining about being overrun with illegal migrants in their shelters. Do I need to go back to the Die Hard movie again and say, welcome to the party, pal? Or maybe I should say, welcome to the party, pals? Because this has been going on for a long time under the Biden administration. It is just a crisis that's getting worse. But in this episode of Reigniting Liberty, the Borellis are going to document once again with our own exclusive video of illegal migrants being bused from Westchester County Airport to New Jersey. So make sure you stay to listen to all of that. And also to address the Democrat mayor whining of suddenly they're in their backyard and we go back to the old NIMBY. They're now NIMBY complaining about not in my backyard. Shocking, isn't it? Well, folks, as you know, the illegal migrant issue is a crisis. It's a crisis in America. It's a crisis in our border states. And it's also a crisis in your backyard. The videos that we have do not lie. It's full pictures and videos of it. And yes, the Borellis did it once again. We traveled all the way from Westchester County, New York, to an unknown destination that turned out to be Edison, New Jersey. Isn't that right, Deneen? That is correct. And uh, we had no idea how far we would have to travel that night. It was already late. And we just said, let's do it. And uh, we followed the bus and uh, got a lot of insight for sure <laughs> with this trip. Yeah, it's... Um it's actually quite an adventure because you're, we found the bus very early going into Westchester County Airport. We saw it going in this, this special gate, so we knew we were positioned in, in the right spot. And I guess it was an hour or so after the flight uh, arrived, the bus pulls out and we were trailing them. And again, we have no idea where we're going to go, whether we're going to go up north into upstate New York like we did the last time or go down south into New York City, perhaps, or even New Jersey. And as the trip evolved, well, we're going down the Jersey Turnpike. So, Dr. Borelli, there we are. We're in New Jersey. But uh, the interesting aspect of this is we never assume. We've always heard that. We were assuming we we're going to go to a public rest stop where we'd be able to video what was going on in full public view with other people around us. <laughs> oh, not this time, Deneen, right? No, surprise. Following the bus down to Edison, New Jersey, which is South Jersey, uh, Dr. Tom was the driver, and I was filming everything from the Westchester County Airport all the way to when we got to this location, which was the Edison Boat yard or Edison Boat Club or something Basin, like that. I, yeah. Basin, yep. Uh, we have a photo of that. 
And uh, I tell you, it was pretty interesting because it was the dead of night. It was really late, maybe one in the morning or so. The bus went through this town. Uh, wow. No lights. There was there, there were no activities. There were some homes, but the lights were out because people were in bed. There were no businesses open. And we're right behind this bus. And all of a sudden, these car lights started lighting up from this parking lot that we drove by right dr tom it was it was so totally surreal because we're going through these small suburban streets and i'm saying where is this bus going does this bus know we're tracking them it was pretty obvious i was tracking them because i was not at, at late night i wasn't going to try to play cute and hide behind no we're following you and it was so surreal because we're driving down these dark deserted streets and then out of nowhere, all these car lights are behind us. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, what did we get ourselves into? And then the bus drives into this uh, boat basin, which is a big parking lot. I think it's part of the public works in Edison, New Jersey. And all these, we pull off into a uh, distant part of the parking lot. And then all these cars start lining up one by one facing the bus. And I would say, Denny, what, there were about 20, 25 cars there? At least. Uh, they came in. It was like they got the signal because oh. they knew the bus was going to be there at X time. And the, uh, the flip side of all of this is that nobody knew the Borellis were going to be there. So we didn't <laughs> tell anybody we were doing this or, or uh, you know, keep in touch with us or check in because right. we have no idea where we're going late at night. So here we are, two yahoos in this parking lot with all these cars <laughs> and the bus that pulled over to the side. So we could only see the one side of the bus, the driver's side, and we couldn't see what was going on on the other side because they that side of the bus was facing the woods. Yeah, the, the, the bus was uh, parallel uh, to a wooded lot behind it, and there was area between the wooded lot and the bus. But looking at the bus, you couldn't tell what was going on behind the bus. And Deneen Dean Deneen is saying, all right, Tom, stay in the car. I don't want you getting out. And I said, all right. But of course, I got out because I spent, uh, you know, the, we're late at night. I'm not going to just sit in a car and not take good video. So we took great videos. And of, it was an amazing. At one part, there was a car there, a couple of people, and they had welcoming balloons for an illegal migrant, obviously is very coordinated. Well, welcome home, even though this ain't your home. Uh, so that was uh, an interesting aspect. And then we uh, took the, uh, I, I would say a relatively bold move. I decided to go around the back of the bus and Deneen's behind me and I tried to interview what I, who I presumed was the bus driver and uh, they did not or want to talk to me. someone coordinating everything, we're not uh, really yeah, sure. Yeah, no, it was coordinated. Yeah. And we got a very interesting picture and video of an illegal migrant with some sort of document that he was about to sign. And this is, I think, responsible for the delay because of the way this has been working is there's people waiting, but it, it's not like everybody gets off the bus like you see in a movie. Hey, you know, the bus rides up and everybody walks off. No, it's slow. It's like every 10 minutes, every eight minutes, someone walks away from the bus and they are met with either a friend, family member, or whoever, and then they leave in their own private car. So it was obviously very well orchestrated. Um, at one point when I was taking the video of the uh, illegal taking a, uh, signing that document or looking at that document, the bus driver kind of hit my hand, not, not aggressively at all, but you know, he was not happy. I was uh, taking pictures and I had all, we had all these videos from the hind, uh, the bus, which you couldn't see what was going on from the main parking lot.
No está grabando. Just want to interview. Who are you from? Get out to L. What company do you want for? Health and Human Services, Homeland Security. I just want to do an interview. What's that? No, now you can't see this. Where you with? Does it matter? Can I tell you? Yeah, it does matter. I mean, it's a public park. I have a, a right to ask questions. But you can't look at our bus, though. I can't look at your bus. Nope. Why don't you invite me in? Sir, that's a negative, sir. So who do you work for? No, I'm just trying to get an interview here. Oh, you're good. I'm good. I know I'm good. You're good. Are you with uh, Homeland Security? Whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean, bro? Whoa, bro. Don't, don't touch me. Hey, don't touch me. Do so not touch me. Here. What? Is this a public park? So, do you want to go through by your car? Is that fine? Sure, come take a picture of my car. It's just a public park. I'm just trying to get an interview. I'm not trying to see you Right, right. I just come out for one interview with a few quick questions. We can. What do you mean you can? Our company What which company? You can't tell me the company. Nope. After that, we just hightailed it out. Uh, I think it was, I don't know, it was like about 2.30 in the morning. Uh, either that, that's when we left. Or I think we got home at 2.30. So this was about, a, what, Denise, what do you think, about a 50-mile trip? Yeah, about a 50-mile trip. To where yeah. you live in Connecticut? Yes, yes. And, so, uh, <laughs> and this was like during the work week. So, of course, we had to. <laughs> Uh, get up and get to work bright and early so we didn't get much sleep that night as well but uh, yeah. it, it was worth documenting all of this uh, the exchange with you and the, the coordinator or the driver that was uh, something to behold as well and again we got a lot of video footage a lot of photos we have videos so those who are listening to us on our podcast I highly recommend uh, you go to cloud hub and, and visit uh, Deneen's channel there where the, these videos will be put up so that you actually can see uh, what we're explaining. Because again, a pitch is worth a thousand words and it is truly, uh, I would say really shocking. The, overall, the, the amount of coordination that this requires, I, I think is truly stunning. It was no accident all these cars were lined up. They were waiting, and as I mentioned, one group car had balloons. So this is a highly orchestrated, coordinated effort run by the federal government. And this is just one instance, Dr. Tom, one right. instance that right. we no, happen right, to right, document. Right. Yeah, right. there this are countless happening. others. Yeah, and this isn't happening on numerous occasions in Westchester County Airport, which is about you know 30 miles north of New York City, and seems to be the main airport where they distribute illegal uh, migrants to surrounding areas, New York City, uh, Mayor Adams, uh, New Jersey, and Connecticut. And one interesting aspect of this is that this particular flight was not on the public board, right? Because you went into the airport yeah. to take a look and yeah. it wasn't listed. Yeah, it's got to be a charter flight. And I'm not sure if they normally list charter flights on the arrival board. I'm not sure about that. But it also disappeared at one point from the tracking app. So I don't know if it was a glitch or whatever, but at the end of the day, it was a successful mission. Uh, my earlier training as a private detective while I was in college over the summer always pays off, <laughs> trying to get in the right position uh, to find the location so you don't miss the bus when it leaves the airport. Uh, that would be a total waste of time. So uh, at least we were successful at that. And again, we're doing this, 
because nobody else is. Remember sure. that. Sure, that's and right. And that's a sign of the unique content that our listeners and viewers get because it would be very easy just to sit at home and do nothing. But we're not doing that. We think it's important for the American people and our listeners and followers and viewers to understand what's actually going on in their backyard while you're sleeping. Yeah, and uh, don't forget what the tagline is for the podcast for this show, Dr. Tom. Everyone has a role to play. What are you doing for liberty? But listen, if you listen to Democrats, all right, they're saying that this isn't Biden's fault, especially the, <laughs> these Democrat mayors, the one uh, in Washington, D.C., in New York City. It's not, it's not Biden's fault. Uh, well, now, mayor of Washington, D.C. Uh, and New York City, they are calling for the federal government to get involved. Hey, help us out here. We need your help. Hello. But there was no talk. There were no comments from them months ago because this didn't just start. So now, all of a sudden, because of the influx, uh, the overcrowding at the uh, homeless shelters and more and more illegal migrants on the streets in D.C. and New York City and elsewhere. Now they want the federal government to do something. To so get adding a different twist to all of this, Dr. Tom, Biden's ad agenda of transporting Ill illegal migrants throughout the country, Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott and Re Republican Arizona Governor Doug du Ducey, they've recently started busing illegal migrants, especially to Washington, D.C., from their states. Now, here's a, a blurb from the Washington Examiner, Dr. Tom. More than 150 buses traveling from Arizona and Texas have transported nearly 6,000 migrants to the nation's capital over the past three months, and Democrats in Washington are complaining that they cannot accommodate the mass releases, Dr. Tom. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Oh, oh, yeah, they can't. And you know, again, it, it's sad because it really does impact American citizens. Absolutely. Yeah. And homeless shelters are there for U.S. citizens who are homeless because of a variety of you know, tragedies that may have happened in their life. So now there's yes. overcrowding. So who gets priority? Again, it is a border crisis and it is affecting everyone in the United States. It's just amazing. And, you know, what... The mayor of uh, D.C., uh, Muriel Bowser. Bowser. Right? Yeah. She called it a very significant issue. Hello. She was on television and she claimed illegal migrants were, and I quote, being tricked into nationwide bus trips when their final destinations are places all over the United States of America. End quote. Dr. Tom, she said they were being tricked. 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 Yeah. You, uh, take this long, dangerous trek into the United States, and then they get to the United States under Biden's catch and release, and yet somehow they're being tricked. So they're tricked when they're on a bus that Governor Abbott sends to D.C., right? right? Yep. But they're not tricked when they board planes to small airports around the country, like Westchester County Airport. So I'm not sure about the word trick, but I guess she has to put some sort of negative uh, angle to slam Republican governors who are actually on the border. So these governors are saying, hey, you want illegal migrants? Hey, this is how it feels. This is the impact. So yeah. I think it's, it's, a, it's a good strategy they're doing. And most of all, now there's news about it. Right. Which shining the spotlight on shining it. the spotlight on and then, and then the whole thing, the whole situation is just a, a tragedy on so many levels, because, yes, it's like there's a welcome mat for people to make that dangerous journey from wherever they're coming from. Uh, and, and you have the border towns that are really suffering the consequences of this, Dr. Tom, in more ways than one, whether it's financially, property damage, uh, the, these families are concerned about their safety and security, uh, a lot of uh, damage and, and trash that is left on, on these properties. But here's another thing with New York City Mayor Eric Adams, Dr. Tom, who says the homeless shelters are overrun 
And he is asking President Biden for, and I quote, urgently needed resources. So it was very interesting that these two Democrats, now all of a sudden that this is in their backyard, like you said, NIMBY, not in my backyard. Now they're vocal about this, but this is not new, as I mentioned before. So here we have the White House press secretary, uh, Corinne Jean-Pierre, Here's her aspect about this. She was asked about the governors, uh, the Texas and um, Arizona governors busting the illegal migrants. She said that it was, quote, shameful and uh, that the illegal migrants are being used as political tools, Dr. Tom. That's and I think it's, I, I think we, we have, this has come up before, I believe a couple of months ago, and I think we believe it's shameful uh, that, uh, that uh, some governors are using uh, migrants as a political tool, uh, as a political play, uh, when uh, we should be uh, making sure that we're doing everything that we can uh, to, help, uh, to help folks who are coming in to this process uh, uh, in a uh, legal way, and making sure that uh, you know we do this in a in a safe uh, in a safe way and respectful way. And I think it's shameful that that is happening. Uh, unbelievable. First we have tricked, right? Yeah. Now it's shameful. I, I'll tell you what's shameful is having an open border policy. That is shameful. Absolutely. Because and and. Mayor Adams is looking for resources, i.e. he's looking for cash. So that means there's a cost. He's admitting there is a financial cost for illegal migrants coming over in huge numbers, huge numbers. There's a financial cost. And he's whining and complaining about it, and he has his hand out. But the bottom line is it's costing. And as we know, what do we, how much debt do we have these days? We're close to 30 trillion, I think. But money means nothing to Democrats. It's an open border policy and Biden owns it completely. And, and look, just look at the recent evidence. Biden's trying to get rid of Title 42, which is a public health law that allows uh, immediate uh, expulsion of the country if someone comes across the border that's not a citizen. Immediate. He's trying to, he has an expiration date for that from the CDC, I believe it's, it's the law is based. But a judge has held that up. So if you want to protect the borders, you would think you'd want to enforce something like Title 42. And oh, by the way, SARS-CoV-2 isn't going away. There's another variant. In fact, President Biden has the, va the variant. Yes, he does. Right? So it's still a public health issue, uh, sure. boys and girls out there in uh, radio and TV land. Uh, that's one. And then there's the remain in Mexico policy that the Biden administration got rid of, and the Supreme Court said, yeah, you can get rid of it. Now, Remain in Mexico was successfully used under President Trump, and that requires asylum seekers to stay in Mexico, i.e. remain in Mexico, until a judge could hear their asylum case. Without Remain in Mexico, it becomes the Biden catch and release saga, because that's what's happening. They come sure. over, they get papers, and then they get bust and planed around the country. So Biden owns it, and as uh, the Vice President Kamala Harris, oh, we have to address the root causes. <laughs> the root causes. Look <laughs> in the mirror. That's the root cause. Look exactly. at Title 42. That is the root cause. Look at Remain in Mexico. That is the root cause. Planing migrants around the country, that's the root cause. Ask Adam, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, who looks for resources. That's the root cause. It's Biden's the root cause. They don't have a mirror. Maybe he's Count Dracula. I don't know. He doesn't have a reflection. I don't know. But no I digress sense once either. Again. Yeah. Well, that, but there, there is, regardless of the consequences that are 
gripping the country, especially the border states. But again, this is now an American crisis. Everyone is affected by this one way, shape or form. And, and we've seen it up close and personal, Dr. Tom. And then there's the lies and the deception coming from the Biden administration. And it goes right to uh, the head of uh, Homeland Security, Mayorkas, Alejandro Mayorkas, right? Another train wreck. Another train wreck. He was recently at uh, Aspen uh, Security Forum, and the quote of his statement was, look, the border is secure. What? That's he right said that with a straight face, right? It, 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 yeah, right? It, how do they lie like that? It reminds me of one of our other, uh, our other episodes where we're saying uh, the Democrats think you're stupid. Well, clearly they think you're stupid. We just outlined with video and the mayor's complaining, but the border, according to my office, <laughs> is secure. Let's listen to Mr. Mayorkas' comment. Speaking of the border... Is the border safe? Now I was watching a news channel and they were talking about an invasion was happening and I got a little concerned. Look. <laughs> um, the, border, the border is secure. The border, um, we are working to make the border more secure. That has been a historic challenge. Yeah, secure. <laughs> I'm thinking of my quote of my late mother, but I'm not going to say it on. Uh, <laughs> no, you better on, not. Uh, she would say your bleep. <laughs> right. When someone was saying something that was totally wrong. Yeah, like I said, Mayorkas is a, is a train wreck. This whole administration is a train wreck, Dr. Tom. This is from the New York Post, which also reported, quote, while a total of 1,746,119 migrant encounters have been recorded in fiscal year 2022, which began in October, as of June, the secretary pointed fingers at lawmakers for the historic numbers, end quote. Yeah, it, like I said, not Biden's fault or anyone else. Now, it's stop. the lawmakers' Full fault. Stop. 1.7 million yes. and the fiscal year isn't over yet. Right. I know. We're, we're almost at the beginning of August. We've got to go through another couple of months to the end of September. So that number is going to be even higher for fiscal year uh 2022. 2022. Yep. Well, here's more word salad from Mayorkas. Quote, I have said to a number of legislators who expressed to me that we need to address the challenge at the border before they pass legislation. And I take issue with the math of holding the solu solution hostage until the problem is resolved. End quote. Okay. He's the problem. He's the, pr the problem. The mirror yeah, again. The they problem. don't have one. They just deny the reality, and they're counting on the American people to be ignorant and stupid. That's right. what they're counting on. And that's why we do these midnight runs to expose their crisis. But meanwhile, all of this is just really reckless and dangerous. And uh, you know, we pointed that out earlier in this discussion and also in our other interviews, either the two of us together, Dr. Tom, or interviewing experts on this issue. Uh, but yeah, according to Mayorkas, it's the lawmaker's fault. Well, I guess we're done here, Dr. Tom. There's nothing else for us to talk about. All right, great. Have a good week. Uh, no one's fault in this administration. They don't take except accountability for anything. And then there's more mumbo jumbo from Mayorkas. I'm going to use that from now, from now on. Mumbo jumbo Mayorkas. Say that All three right. times fast. I can. I know, right? Here's his quote. There is work to be done. Mayorkas continued, adding that safe and secure are two different words. I mean, what a, what a, what a way to do your job, man. I mean, He's the worst of the worst. And again, reckless yeah. and dangerous, right? I mean, this is just crazy talk. And the other thing that bothers me about him, the man is arrogant. Yes. He sits Smug. there and he, in his congressional hearings, he holds his chin up. He's yep. just an arrogant person who's part now. He's playing a key role in really the destruction of the United States with respect to 
uh, what's happening on the border. And it is just phenomenal. Remember, 1.7 million over that number encounters. Think yes. about that. And Unbelievable. one window, a short period of time, too. Right. Well, the uh, Border Patrol officials disagree, and they blasted Mayorkas. This is from Fox News Digital. Quote, hundreds of thousands crossing every month is not the definition of secure, the agent told Fox News Digital. They are liars, and anyone who believes them are fools. End quote. I mean, thank you for making those comments because again, reckless and dangerous, this administration could care less about what is going on at the border and sending these folks around the country. We don't know who they are, where they're come from, what their background is. They're undocumented. They're here illegally. Hello, they broke the law. <laughs> oh, speaking of breaking the law, by the way, do you know that, uh, they show like their arrest warrant or, or yeah, an arrest, some sort of arrest warrant. So they actually can fly on planes. <laughs> yes, I know. I mean, it, it, as you would say, you can't make this stuff up. We don't even know, who, to your point, we don't know who these people are. They come across the border, they get some document, some sort of arrest document from the, the border patrol agents. And, and that's the, basically their passport. Hey, I'm here. I got arrested. Let me now, let me get on a plane. Oh, by the way, a plane that we're paying for. Yeah. I think the number is something, it. what was it over uh 6,000? Is that the number, Deneen? I, I don't even know. Um, it, it, it's a number that shouldn't be, that's for sure. But let me, let me mention these other stats before I forget. Uh, Customs and Border Protection, this is a quote, announced last week that there were 207,000 migrant encounters at the border in June, compared with 189,000 plus last year. And here's this headline, Dr. Tom. Biden has released nearly 1 million Southwest border migrants into the United States. That's, That's the a headline. That's the old catch and release. I believe that yeah. slide is from the Center for Immigration Studies. We had one of their representatives yes. on an earlier podcast. Yeah, so think about that. And I uh, need to correct myself. The, uh, the TSA chief said there was a thousand illegal immigrants that have been allowed to board planes with warrants, right. with arrest, arrest warrants as IDs, not 6,000, 1,000. But you never know. The clock keeps ticking. And that is that we know of. Exactly. Right. That's their passport. Hey, I'm here illegally. My new passport is you have no idea who I am. You know who I am because I got this paper from Border Patrol. Right. And our, our hats off to the Border Patrol personnel uh, for what they try to do on a daily basis, trying to keep our country safe, our citizens safe. They have a tough job to do. The terrain, the environment is, is tough to work with as well. And you just look and, at the number, 1.7 encounters, 1.7 million encounters. Yeah. Yep. They are overworked, about burnout. overworked and overwhelmed. And I, I do thank them for uh, their hard work for sure. Yeah, it is just such a tragedy. And let's not forget the the, the human toll. Uh, it really is a humanitarian issue. Look, these people crossing the border, they're not doing it for fun. They're taking huge risks. And uh, was it a couple of weeks ago, what, 53 died in the in the back of a semi-truck uh, trailer? Yeah. Uh, you know, absolutely horrendous. That's on Mayorkas, that's on Kamala Harris, that's on President Biden. That's the consequence of their open border policy. And then let's not forget about the illegal drugs with fentanyl. Fentanyl sure. is, is now a huge part of the drug overdoses in the United States. So when I use strong words like open border policies are destroying America, it is destroying a lot of lives. And they do not care. Sure. And it's also the human trafficking. You mentioned the drugs. There are a lot of young children who are out there by themselves or they're with strangers. And we have no idea what happens uh, when they're out and trying to get to uh, the, the, the U.S. border. 
absolutely no idea how these people are treated, what's happening to them. Um, the environment itself is, is just rugged and dangerous as well. Uh, but Dr. Tom, here's something that I came across that uh, gives an up-close look about illegal migrants and the overcrowding that has taken place in the homeless shelters and how they are utilizing resources that should be used for Americans in need. Now, this is from the New York Post. Uh, a few men were recently quoted by the New York Post. They're staying at the Bellevue Men's Shelter in Manhattan, it's in New York City, and uh, they commented about the issue. There was a 70-year-old Vietnam War veteran. He called the situation a sad state of affairs, and here is a quote from him. I slept in jungles, I've slept in foxholes, but I won't sleep on the streets in the United States of America. You got to take care of home first. Again, a 70-year-old Vietnam War veteran. And there were other comments that were made, Dr. Right. Tom, but this really but that, you know, is, that really is very does, glaring. You know, that, that one quote and that one example really does encapsulate everything that's wrong here. Here you have a Vietnam veteran who, A, is homeless. He yeah. defended our country. Right. Yeah. And now he's you know, surrounded by and resources going to illegal migrants. I mean, you can't find a better example of what's wrong with this policy with respect to what's going on in homeless shelters. And that's why Mayor Adams in New York City is whining about it. And the bigger problem here, Deneen, is that the media isn't reporting on this at all. Uh, your employer, Fox News, has reported on this. My employer, uh, Newsmax has reported on this, and I have to thank Newsmax. They covered both of our trips uh, with respect to following these buses. The first one was to Slotsburg, New York, which is up the New York State Thruway. And the second one we just described was in Edison, New Jersey. Newsmax had me on discussing that. And a clip of one of those, the last one on Edison, New Jersey, that we put up on Twitter had something like over 20,000 views. Sure. So the public wants to see this, but they don't know it's happening. And it really is outrageous that it takes the two of us to go through all of that, to document it. Yeah. Well, we have the media that is doing a disservice to the country. They don't want to uh, report on anything negative. Right. Uh, like they should be, they should do the investigation and put the facts and the information out there to inform the public. I mean, I mean really, what, what, what else are they supposed to be doing? What are the newspapers doing in New Jersey? The headline could be, yeah. while you're sleeping, this is what's going on in your backyard. A total, total disaster. And another thing to consider is the incentives that Democrats are giving these uh, illegal migrants to, to make that dangerous trip. Because you can come into the United States and you get privileges. In some instances, you get health care from states. And California does that. I think New York City does that. Yeah. In Massachusetts, they just passed a law where they can get driver's license. And Massachusetts isn't the only one. So you get to the United States and you basically hit the gold mine, and that's why they're taking that risk, uh, right? They're uh, sanctuary cities, sanctuary states. Just get here any way you can. And 1.7 million encounters yeah. so far this fiscal year, the government fiscal year, that says it all because they have all these incentives and it's all the Democrats. The root cause, again, Biden, look in the mirror. And don't forget about those who come to America the right way. Come here legally. They get in line. They do it uh, with the lawyers or whatever the process is for costly. them to get to. Yes, and it is costly, absolutely. But they don't forget about them who have come here the right way. And they, we have the uh, countless number of people who are crossing our southern border illegally and Democrats are enabling them.
Well, folks, thanks for checking out Reigniting Liberty. And remember, everyone has a role to play. What are you doing for liberty? Until next time.